We're joined by Democratic strategist Atima Omara and former Republican Congressman David Jolly from Florida. Congressman Jolly, with this Senate race in Ohio pitting the MAGA movement against the old school Republicanism, does Trump's endorsement of Moreno, he was there rallying for him over the weekend, does that carry the weight he thinks it does? You know, it really might in a Republican primary, but Mike DeWine, the governor himself, has a lot of weight as well. So this has a lot of intrigue, really for two reasons. Uh, as as Steve pointed out, look, most odds makers, I think, would suggest Republicans have a bit of an edge looking at the Senate majority after November. It will be competitive. Sherrod Brown, the incumbent senator from Ohio, really a strong Democratic senator who needs to hold that race. So if Marino, Trump's backed candidate actually pulls this off, you know, Brown has a, a better shot. But also, if Marino were to win, the second dynamic is there is this growing caucus within the Senate Republicans that begin to look like <laughs> House Freedom Caucus members. Uh, your Ted Cruz, your Josh Hawley, your Mike Lee, your J.D. Vance, would it be a Senator Marino as well? And for whomever succeeds Mitch McConnell as the Republican leader, either majority or minority in the Senate, a Marino win just creates a little more trouble for that Senate Republican caucus. But Congressman, what if Marino loses? Is that a smack in the face for Trump? And does that signal anything about November? Uh, certainly. I mean, look, we know that Donald Trump has an outsized image when it comes to these races, but often underperforms. And Marino has had some trouble as a candidate of late. Matt Dolan is a consistent, strong Republican candidate in the state of Ohio. But if you look at the J.D. Vance contest against Dolan, the Trump wing indeed won. And with Donald Trump's blessing, Ohio is really trending, particularly in Republican politics, in a very Trumpian way. I do think it, ha it, it helps Marino in this specific case. Atima Dolan, who, as we mentioned, is backed by the governor of Ohio, DeWine, had an interesting comment about civility in politics. Let's listen. This is what we have to do as Republicans. We have to recognize that civility in politics is not a weakness. And strength... We need to judge strength, not on how loud we are, but how much we get done for the American people. The fact that he had to say civility is not a weakness, that speaks volumes, no? Yeah, it definitely does. But I think he's also tapping into what we've seen happening across some of these Republican primaries. There is still a stubborn anti-Trump sort of sentiment within the Republican Party. It's small, but it's still there. And he's appealing to those folks who will come out in the suburbs to, to vote for him. And so I think the larger question goes also even toward the, the general election, that, you know, if he does not prevail, you know, and if it is Moreno, will, you know, Republican voters who want to stop Trump, who want to, you know, you know, protect democracy, actually go and cast their votes for Sherrod Brown? and Joe Biden, because quite frankly, talk is cheap if you're going to say you care about democracy, and then you go ahead and go vote for Reno and Trump anyway. Congressman, we know a lot of Americans are just disenchanted by the two presumptive presidential nominees, and yet the group No Labels is apparently struggling to find candidates for an alternative ticket. We're reporting that the list of no's is growing, and that includes former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, former Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels, yeah. New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu, and I could go on and on. What does that tell you? Yeah, several things can be true at the same time, Anna. Most Americans prefer to identify as political independents, not actually as partisans, as Democrats or Republicans. And so we know statistically Americans are looking for alternatives. However, something else is true is that the no labels effort has been doomed for failure from the start. I shared that with their leadership two years ago, along with many others. It simply is too difficult to mount a presidential run. If there is an alternative in the making, that may be, be 
successful at a grassroots state level in a different arena. But to mount a presidential run, the barriers to entry are just too high. You really can't get your candidate in front of the, the American people on, in all 50 states. And so no labels is struggling both from a mechanical issue, but then just a general lack of support. I think their mission is doomed for failure. They should abandon it. What I worry about is there might be more of an impact from an RFK Jr. running almost on a singular issue of vaccine freedom. That is something where there is enough of a constituency in the United States that could really disrupt a two-person race. But you could argue, in that case, it actually hurts Donald Trump more than Joe Biden. What do you think, Atima? Well, I, well, I don't disagree with Congressman Jolly. <laughs> that being said, if a third-party candidacy can't gain major momentum now. Will it ever? I don't I don't quite think so. I think at this point, from my experience as having worked political parties from the local level to the national level as a Democrat, is it's going to be very much hard to actually like build brick by brick, state by state, a, a party that can actually field a candidate. And there's a reason that's just never quite worked before, because it takes a, quite a lot of infrastructure, quite a lot of fundraising, quite a lot of work, especially in today's political climate. Atima Omara and former Congressman David Jolly, thank you guys so much for the conversation.